can never get it the right way up. There we go. Uh, the immuno, I'm oh, sorry, the stain and, and fixation is a little bit, a little bit weird in the middle, so it makes it kind of a very purpley violet color, but I think we can still make this work. From low power, I think there's a lot of similarities to what we were just looking at, right? We've got the epidermal hyperplasia with the tabling of Reedy. It's even got a little Grenz, if you like that. But look, it's irritated in the middle. Grenz goes away, right? And it gets real thin. See, that's what happens. You've got nice collagen trapping. Look at that. And this was on, if I recall, like the, the leg of a 30-year-old woman, I think. Something like that. And so we've got collagen trapping, the middle's kind of fascicles or story form kind of pattern, kind of haphazard pattern like a DF would have. But I, you're probably seeing by now, what's all that big, dark blobs of purple in there? And oh my goodness, that's pleomorphism like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Not just a little pleomorphism, that's a lot. So when we have a dermatofibroma that has scattered bizarre nuclei, people have kind of... Uh, referred to those as dermatofibroma with monster cells. I do not ever put that in a report, with rare exceptions when I used to do consult cases, I would sometimes tell people that these have been referred to, but I don't ever want that on a line diagnosis and a patient to read it and think, well, I monster, no one wants a monster in their body, right? That's just not, not something people are interested in having at least. But I think when you, when you see those scattered in an otherwise normal DF, then you just, that's a DF with monster cells, which I personally just sign out as dermatofibroma. And then I point out to the residents, oh, look, it's a, it's a monster cell. And then, then I call it dermatofibroma, next case. Now, this is too much for that to me. Um, and how much atypia is too much is, uh, to me, kind of subjective. But when we have atypia that if you took a high power field here, you could easily say this is a sarcoma, right? This is like got the degree of atypia and pleomorphism and cellularity that you would see in many pleomorphic sarcomas, you know? And then the other thing, if I can find it again, I saw it earlier. Right there. Yeah, right there. Look at that. That's like a figure eight mitosis. That is definitely not normal. No matter what way you look at it, that is an atypical mitosis. So I already told you, Dermatofibromas can have mitoses, sometimes kind of a lot of mitoses scattered throughout. But now we've got a lot of atypia, really diffuse atypia, plus a lot of mitoses and atypical forms. There, were, I looked around in this earlier. There are other mitoses here. So what are we going to do with this? Are we going to say that this is a sarcomatous transformation of a dermatofibroma? Well, no, I, that does happen. Um, it's very, very rare, but the times that that happens, what I expect to see is like a DF that's benign and then a huge sarcoma, like the sheets of sarcoma growing out, like down deep into the soft tissue or something from a pre-existing, like I saw that once before, like on a guy's, it was a lower leg actually, and he had had a lesion there for like 20 years. And then suddenly it expanded rapidly and microscopically there were zones that looked just like a benign dermatofibroma. And then away from that growing out and invading the adjacent tissue was clear high grade sarcoma. So that is one of the, I've only seen a handful of those in my entire career. Very, very rare to have malignant transformation of DF. And considering I see DFs, you know, every day. So if you're a patient watching this, don't freak out. I've got a dermatofibroma on my leg that I've never had removed. So that's how much fear I have about this, like none. It's such exceptionally case reportable, basically. But this, I think, is a unique situation that people have referred to as atypical fibrous histiocytoma, basically atypical dermatofibroma. And the idea here is that even though these look really wild and ugly up close, if you go to low power, they have all the other features that are basically characteristic of dermatofibroma. And, um, and so because of that, um, and they have a very good prognosis, there have been reports of a, a small number of them that have metastasized. But just like other dermatofibromas, cellular and aneurysmal, big DFs, every once in a while, one of those will metastasize like to the lungs and can cause mortality. But we don't go reporting those as like, oh, this could be malignant because it's very, very rare for that to happen. So, so uh, the one of the kind of landmark paper on this topic by Chris Fletcher and colleagues, um, I'll put a link in the video down below, it has, I think, really nice criteria for how to approach these. But the way I conceptually think is this looks like a DF at low power, it fits for a DF clinically, and then you go to high power and you see really ugly cells and um, but they're in the arrangement of a DF and it's a small lesion usually confined to the dermis. If it starts getting down to the subcutis, I start getting more anxious about it. Okay, so and I think in Chris Fletcher's paper, maybe some of them did go in the subcutis, but still I, I start getting a little more worried. Now, the if you're watching this at home, their first question may be, why is this not an atypical fibrosanthoma 
slash pleomorphic dermal sarcoma, right? AFX PDS. Well, I suppose people could make the argument that that's what this is. And I think in some old literature that probably some things that were called AFX on the extremities of young people, in my opinion, were probably not AFX. They were this. In my thinking, AFX and PDS are almost exclusively in old sun damage patients. And the vast majority are on the head and neck of old sun damage people, okay? That's the kind of place where if, if you put a tumor that looked like this, uh, in the scalp of an old person and I did stains to rule out uh, squame and melanoma and stuff, then I would call it AFX or pleomorphic dermal sarcoma if it was big and went to the subcutis. On the extremity of a young person, I personally am never going to make a diagnosis of AFX or PDS because to me the, the pathway of that is a chronic UV exposure it, that drives those in, in my belief. Now there may be others that disagree with me and you're welcome to to do that and to go read about other thoughts on that. But to me, on the extremity or the trunk of a young adult or even middle-aged adult, I'm not gonna call something AFX or PDS unless there's a bunch of sun damage in the background. So anyway, that's my my thoughts on this. Although management-wise, I think you approach the same way. It needs to be excised with a negative margin. This is what I usually recommend when I have had these, but that the prognosis is very good. So um, that's, that's kind of my approach. And actually, I'll try to remember to put, I have an example of a template of how I've worded these when I've signed them out because understandably this is quite confusing for treating physician colleagues to wrap their head around because you're like well you're saying it's like a df but then you're saying that we you know that it's got a lot of atypia it's kind of it's kind of weird and it's hard for people to conceptually um, deal with these the, especially the fact that they can have atypical mites and be really wild and some people have said well how do we know it's not a sarcoma that just behaves well because it's small and in the dermis that is a very legit thought i mean it goes into the very deep philosophical questions of how do we define cancer how much does something have to metastasize for us to, you know, call it cancer, like it becomes very complicated and I don't know the full answer. But I remember the first time I saw one of these in fellowship and I thought that there was no way this could possibly be any variant of dermatofibroma. This had to be sarcoma because it was so ugly. So if it startles you and shocks you, hey, I'm right there with you. So in this one, actually, as look at these kind of dense keloidal collagen, mm -hmm. another feature that you can see in dermatofibromas, some der dermatofibromas have this kind of collapsing keloidal collagen where they'll get hemosiderin and these keloid looking collagen and they all kind of squinch together like this. And so again, n another feature that is very typical of like a regular dermatofibroma, but here we're seeing it with the background of a ton of atypia. So to me, once it starts looking like this, this is when I would call it atypical FH. And I don't have a a dermatofibrom with monster cells handy, but basically imagine uh, one of these cells kind of scattered in an otherwise bland looking dermatofibroma. That's what I would say, just DF with monster cells, which I don't even bring up or mention. So, Are those lymphocytes in the background? Uh, probably so. And are they typical? I don't know. Uh, lymphocyte atypia is uh, something that's out of the realm of my abilities. I think it's like magical, mystical stuff that only <laughs> heme pats can do. You know what I mean? But in all honesty, I would say that probably many of the bigger cells are part of the tumor, and they're kind of the, the whatever a fibrohistiocytic cell is. We, this is kind of a made-up word that we use for things that have this spindly, slightly histiocyte-looking uh, appearance. I think the, the very small ones are probably uh, lymphs, and to me, they look normal in size. If you want to find some crinkly cerebriform look, you can always find it, I think, or at least I feel like I can always find irregular like shapes, but nothing really stands out to me as too abnormal there. And there are, I noticed there's some plasma cells here. Yeah. So a few of those. Mm -hmm. No, another one of those big, big prophase mitosis, right? Where mm -hmm. the chromosomes are all, you know, if, you, if you're not sure how to tell prophase, prophase means that the, the chromosomes are all arranged into chromatids, so individual little little blobs or, or linear structures of chromatin, and there's no nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane is dissolved, which tells you that mitosis is already starting to, to happen. So I think prophase, the kind of spotty, speckled-looking mitoses, are sometimes the hardest for people to recognize when they're starting out pathology because they don't have that little caterpillar, the little line or the two parallel lines shape that you see in metaphase and, and anaphase um, mitoses. So the prophase ones, I think, good to recognize. And when they're when they're big like that, I mean, that's got to have an abnormal number of chromosomes, right? Mm -hmm. So so something's going on here. I don't know molecularly what's actually happening in these, but and and then look, just like regular DFs, hemosiderin. See, so it's got so many of the features of of DF. It's actually a little easier to see on the screen than here with the refractile golden hemosiderin, which is a common feature in dermatofibromas. Oh, there's more up there mm -hmm. and there. All right, atypical fibrous histiocytoma. 